<laughs> Greetings guys and gals and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest 6! Air today, gone tomorrow! In the last episode, we learned from the pawn shop owner that he would give us a magic map if we gave him something about equal in exchange. Um, and as we can see, the old man in black is staring at us with his golden eyes yet again. Uh, before we buy the map, however, there's something I want to do. Oh, <laughs> I realized I sell the game speed up um, fairly high. Let me just uh, fix that. There we go. Before we do that, though, I want to go into the... can enter the building by using the shop's door. Oh, let's, let's try that again. Oh, the sound's a little quiet, sorry. And who do we have here? How may I help you? We have someone here that was not here before, and um, when I did this session the first time, I actually forgot to come back and meet this character, and it's pretty crucial that we actually meet him uh, right now if we want to get um, the best outcome later. So let's take a look at him. An odd-looking man is reading in the stuffed chair. He wears a vest, balloon-style pants, and pointed shoes. There's something deliberately silly about the man, as though he were a performer of some sort. Okay, he seems like he might be a jester or something. Let's see if we can talk to the man. Oh, ignore that. I keep... <laughs> That's my phone going off in the distance. Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. It seems that the man is quite, um... Worried about Cosima, uh, but he doesn't seem to want to talk to us either. Perhaps if we um, convinced him who we were, we'd be able to befriend the man. So let's show him our ring. After all, it worked on the guards. They re uh, recognized us after we uh, uh, showed it to them. So let's try showing it to him. Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flipmice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me, the Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known... <laughs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Califan and Queen Alaria. There's Califan's oh, name. Those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life. So in love. And Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing. Smart as a whip. Kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir or his plans for Cosima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Cosima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. All right, it seems we've met a new friend. Jalo, the, um, jester... 
for the uh, Castle of the Crown. And according to Jalo, he does not exactly trust the Vizier, and he hasn't seen much of Kasima lately, so he has his suspicions about her. Also, he mentioned that um, Kasima has a pet nightingale named Sing Sing, and he was thinking about sending her a message through it, which we may be able to do later. Uh, before we leave the bookshop, however, I want to take a look at this uh, book again one more time. How much for that book on the uh, if I can skip this dialogue because we've heard it before. I just, um, I had to, um, actually reset uh, my file because I missed Jalo the first time and I really wanted to show him off because it's better if you befriend him as early as you can in the game. And I, I still could have befriended him at a later time in the other, um, take that I was doing, but um, I figured it'd be best to show it off as soon as you can do it, which is right after you meet the ferryman. Now, oh, lamps for new. oh this is the lamp salesman again. Now we want to go back to the pawn shop and we can actually go get the magic map now. So let's go Good do that. Day. Can we take a look at what's on the, the counter? The pawn shop's counter is made of a sturdy teak. The wood is well worn by eager hands and well oiled by the shop's faithful keeper. I see. Let's uh, speak to the pawn shop owner once more. Perhaps we have something valuable enough to trade. What would you take in exchange for the magic map? I would need something of great value in trade for this map. Something of great value. Well, we do so happen to have... Um, well, the mechanical nightingale we got from him, I don't think that'd be valuable enough. Rabbit's foot charm, doubt that would be super valuable. I think the most valuable thing we actually have is our family ring. Even though we don't really want to give that up at this point, but we don't really have much of a choice. We kind of have to trade it in at this point. So, I suppose we will do that. Would you be willing to take my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No. That's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, it is only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for gold. Ah, and a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Thank you. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. All right, we've got ourselves a map. Uh-oh, what's this? The man in black seems to be approaching. Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. This old man gets more and more mysterious every time we see him. Seems to have a thing for mints, apparently. Seconds later in the castle... Master! I followed Prince Alexander as you... wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained... I just reprieved... He just got a magic map. Oh! You fool! You've been eating those mints again! I ordered you to stop that! Yes, <laughs> master! Now, what is this about a magic map? With a map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as quickly as... <gasps> uh, quickly as I can! I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar, I can't have him stirring things up now. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... Ooh. Seems like the vizier is up to something. At least not as, uh... Well, then again, he didn't seem super friendly from the start, but perhaps not as innocent as he may seem. Uh, we learned quite a few interesting things from this cutscene. Um, first off, 
uh, it appeared that the um, the man he was talking to in that scene w had golden eyes, just like the old man and the uh, the boy who died in the lake. And apparently his name is Shamir. And it's interesting to note that Shamir referred to the vizier as his master, which could mean a couple different things. He could either be a servant or perhaps even more... Um, uh, I don't know, this could be a long shot, but perhaps Shamir is a genie of some sort that could explain his power. And, uh, well, I don't know. He said he could travel quickly, that's for sure. And it's also interesting to note the vizier mentioned that he took care of the only means of travel, so perhaps he has something to do with the sabotaged fairy? Are you out here again? Have you finished the chores I gave you? Yes, stepmother. Oh, shut up, evil stepmother. The stables are clean. Okay, uh, but as I was saying, yeah, so um, it appears that the uh, strange old man who was uh, staring at us this whole time was Shamir, and he is continuing to try and uh, hunt us down. So we should be wary of Shamir and his trickery along the way. So um, right now, actually, I want to show off the magic map. And I'm not going to get too in-depth with the new islands in this episode, but I am going to get some stuff started. Let's uh, take a look at the map, shall we? Alexander pulls out his magic map. And here we go. We can now see all the different islands we can travel to in the land of the Green Isles. Um, the first island that we can really do a bunch of stuff in is the Isle of Wonder. But in order to do um, everything we need to there, we need to pay a... Uh, brief visit to the Isle of the Sacred Mountain, which we can't actually do a whole lot there right now, but there's a couple items we can get on the shore of the island, which we're going to need, so I'm going to go there right away. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. You're going to hear that a lot, by the way. <laughs> oh! And we've transported ourselves to the island. And, of course, just like the, um, the pawn shop owner, Salim, said... Uh, the map will only work if you are in sight of the sea. I also could have used it on the shore where we first started the game. That would have worked too. You could either do that or the ferry. Basically any screen that has um, the sea visible in it, you can use the map. It appears there are two small objects on the ground here. Let's take a look at them. Alexander notices an unusually large coal black feather lying on the beach. Okay. Not sure what it will be used for, but... Uh... May as well not pass up the opportunity to pick it up. Alexander takes the feather. All right, and what do we have over here? There's an ugly flower growing near the base of the cliff. All right, uh, ugly flower? Why not add it to our inventory? It does stand out, after all. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong, skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. So it appears that the flower we just picked up has an incredibly strong scent. Perhaps that could be um, useful to us in the future. Let's take a look at what we have in our inventory here, because we have a, um, a puzzle that will happen soon that we're going to need to solve. Actually, one thing we also need to do before we go to the Isle of Wonder is we need to quickly go back to the, um, uh, the Isle of the Crown and pick up an item we can get there now. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Which um, I actually Alexander could have feels earlier. a strange pulling sensation. A strange pulling sensation, again. <laughs> but yeah, I'm basically just gonna set up a bunch of stuff for when we um, can actually go to the Isle of Wonder, um, which I'll probably do in the next episode. Um, so uh, the uh, pawn shop owner mentioned that he had some stuff of the old wizard that. Um, the map used to belong to. He had some stuff that belonged to that wizard that he was going to dump out. So perhaps we can take a look at some of his uh, trash. And here we go. Here we go, indeed. <laughs> here we go, indeed. Let's take a look in that uh, waste a pot. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. Indeed. Let's see what he just poured in there. Maybe there's something useful. With an old wizard, you never know. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, 
a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. Looks like he had quite a few items in there, but of all the things, Alexander found a um, small ink bottle to be the most useful. Which, I guess empty bottles are quite useful in most cases. Actually, can we take a closer look at that uh, bottle? After all, since it did belong to an old wizard, it may have some magical properties, you never know. Alexander's carrying a little ink bottle. It appears to be empty. It appears to be empty, eh? Can we uh, perhaps open the bottle? Alexander shakes the bottle and imagines he hears a faint swishing sound, but decides he is mistaken. Hmm. I don't know. Perhaps we should open it just to be sure. Actually, perhaps we should save before just to be sure. That might be a good idea. Let's see what it does. Alexander decides to open the empty ink bottle. It's stuck. It's... Whoa! His chest is gone. The ink bottle isn't empty at all. It's full of invisible ink. Invisible ink. very strong, but not bad. Interesting. It appears the bottle is not nearly as useless as it appeared to be. Even though empty bottles are generally quite useful anyway, considering the Legend of Zelda series. But our bottle does contain invisible ink, which could prove to be quite useful, I'm sure. And I think I'll actually do uh, one quick puzzle on the Isle of Wonder before we end this episode off. Not sure how long it's been going for, but um, I think we'd be able to do that. Let's go back to the Isle of Wonder. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Actually, well, this is our first time going to the Isle of Wonder, actually. We haven't been there yet. Let's go. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. And here we are on the Isle of Wonder. And you know what? I actually think we will do the Isle of Wonder next time, uh, just because there's quite a few things we can do here. And I think it would be nice if I could uh, fit them all into one video. So next time on Let's Play King's Quest VI, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow, we'll explore the Isle of Wonder and see what new surprises await us here. So we'll see you then.